Hi guys, welcome to my crazy life. It's Lori and today I have a giveaway, collaboration and a DIY for you. What the heck? I know. Um, at the end of the video, there'll be a quick DIY and how I make my cash envelopes. I'll show you that at the end. But first let's talk about why we're here. This is going to be a giveaway and it's co I am collaborating with three other channels and I'm gonna talk about them first. I will show you what I'm giving away and then at the end, you can see how I make the cash envelopes because I did you a little DIY. All right, so I gotta get my notebook out because you know, I'm old and I have to remember things. So the first uh, collab is going to be with Theoni with the Thrifty Divas. Links are in the comments section, or I'm sorry, in the description box down below to all three channels. Um, she is in New Jersey. She does Dollar Tree hauls. I know she does Dollar Tree walkthrough, Dollar Tree walkthroughs, and I believe she does some thrift hauling. And she does have a little one, and so her hauls are way different than mine. Just the things that we haul and find interesting because of our certain life circumstances. So definitely check out her channel. Then we have M&M Halls, I believe they're in Texas, and it's a mother-daughter duo. Melissa is the mom, Michelle is the daughter. They also do Dollar Tree Halls, and I think I saw some 99 cent store halls, which is really fun. I don't have any of those in my area, but I really wish I did. And then the, the last person is Patty's Chance Hall and more, and she does Obviously, she does hauls as well, Dollar Tree, different stores, um, but she also does some cooking and cleaning videos as well, a little bit like my channel, kind of a mixed bag. So we are all doing a giveaway today. Definitely click on the links, check out their channels, enter their hauls and let them, or their giveaways, and let them know I sent you over there. I think that'll be fantastic, kind of working together here. Now, what am I giving away, you ask? Well, it's gonna be like a budgeting setup, if you will. You can use it for that, you can use it for anything you want, but that's kind of where my mind went. So I picked up a pack of my favorite pens from the Dollar Tree. I love these, they do write in this color ink, they're great, and having multiple colors is great for budgeting. I picked up one of these little dupes of the um, Happy Planner Micro. I love these, I use them all the time. Um, this one I think has 50, maybe 60 pages, 60 sheets in it. Great for keeping notes. Got you a notepad here, lined paper on the spiral bound. It's super cute and I love that this is punched out. And you can see through that just to take some notes. You know, you need some note paper. I grabbed the stationery set. Oh, the pineapples are so cute. Write letters. But also this... Um, this envelope here would be great to keep cash in, especially if you like have to go to the ATM and get out money to do your cash envelope systems or whatever. Keep stamps in here. I just think it's pretty nifty and I enjoy it. And I also have one. Um, I grabbed one of these, which is the coupon holder. But these little envelopes here are the perfect size to stash your cash in if you want to put your cash envelopes in here or when you go to the grocery store, you can keep your budget in here or list. It can do anything you want. I just have budget on the brain because that's what I'm doing right now. And that's what it came to mind when I saw this. But again, anything you want. I picked up one of these Traveler's Notebooks for you. And it has the two notebooks inside, which I think this is fantastic. I enjoy writing in mine. And I love that these are replaceable and this is really sturdy. It's not real leather, but it definitely does a good job of making you feel like it's leather and it's very heavy duty. So I grabbed those. So these are all the notebooks and storagey things, right? Because that's fun. But then I got so many questions on how I made these cash envelopes and all of that, that I made a set to share. So you're gonna get eight cash envelopes and a DIY in this video, how to make your own. These are the two-sided. They definitely will hold your bills. Um, they have the paper on both sides. You get this one here and this one here, which definitely has to be the grocery one, right? Just some different textures. I love these, this paper. It's just some scrapbooking paper that I had. So like I said, there's eight different patterns 
for you, which I thought was fun and summery. And then some furniture. And then I'm gonna give you two label sheets with these so that you can label you know, what each envelope is for. Now here's a fun fact. You can also write on this lamination with a Sharpie. It will stay permanent, but if you want to wipe it off, you can take acetone nail polish and wipe it right off. Um, and that's a good idea as well. And then there may be some other little goodies in here. I'm not sure what I come across before I package this up to mail it out to you. But this will be the giveaway that I have. I'm trying to show you everything at once, you know, fancy, like those fancy YouTubers. Got to make my thumbnail. So these will be the giveaway items for you. So definitely, like I said, go check out those other channels and stay tuned because here in a minute, I'm going to pop up the video on how I made those cash envelopes if you want to make some for yourself. So good luck to everybody. Don't forget to put the word budget down below if you would like to be entered in my drawing and go check out Theoni at Thrifty Divas, Melissa and Michelle at M&M Halls and More, and Patty at Patty's Chance Halls. All right, everybody. Enjoy the DIY. Bye. Bye. Okay, friends, we are going to make some cash envelopes for my giveaway um, cash stuffing envelope something I do it's a Dave Ramsey method this is how I do it I've seen it done lots of different ways uh, but this is my particular method if you will so we'll need some scrapbook paper you can use two-sided or one thick or thin I think the thin works a little better but the thick is fun this is what I had and I wasn't gonna go buy more I use a paper cutter. You can use scissors or an X-Acto knife, but honestly, I feel like the paper cutter is going to be, it's gonna give you the cleanest, most even cuts, okay? So that's what I do. Now, my measurements on my cash envelope, I cut my paper, if I want it double-sided, I cut it six and a half inches across by seven inches long, okay? Six and a half by seven. That's just what I like. You can measure your bills, especially if you're not in the US. Obviously your bills are a different shape than ours, but you can just measure and you maybe this will be too big for you. Maybe you want them smaller. So what I do here is I go out, I know I want them six and a half inches wide. So I'll cut my paper at six and a half inches across and this is especially important if you have directional paper. And I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that. Now, unfortunately, I'm really going to get just one double-sided cut out of this, but that's okay. So I did my six and a half inch. Now I'm going to the seven inch side, right? So it's going to be, this is the length. You want it lengthwise because I want it three and a half inches deep by six and a half inches wide, I find that perfect for my bills. Now with this piece, if I wanna make them one-sided so the back is clear, then I'm gonna trim this one down to three and a half inches and my measurements are right here, if you don't know what I'm looking at, on the ruler. And now this is really exactly half of that. So I just, that's how I cut mine. Um, if you want, let's say it is directional paper, like this is definitely up and down, you can cut it in half and then flip it over on the back side so you make sure it's upright on both. I don't go to that trouble, but you can. So you're gonna cut your paper first. Then I have a corner rounder. Now this is not strong enough to cut through plastic. You would really need the crocodilly, crocodilly chompzilla, something or other but it'll at least cut through the paper and make it look pretty on your corners. If you have the, that big, oh, it's made by a scrapbooking company. So on the ones I'm gonna fold, I'm just snipping off the corners. I just think it looks nicer. And I will do this to all of them. And then honestly, I just fold it in half. And these don't have to be perfect by any stretch of the imagination. Literally, they're holding money, you know, in an envelope. 
but that's what it would look like. That's what it's gonna look like when I put it through the sealer. Now, here is, let me get this paper out of the way. I have all the other ones already cut and ready to go. So I'll put this one in this stack and I'm making for myself a stack. I prefer my backs to be clear on mine, on the envelopes. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pieces. Actually, there's probably more than eight because I think I have two of that. So I'll take that out. There should be eight in here. Let's do that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I'm missing one. I bet it's over here somewhere. Oh yeah, here it is, duh. Eight, so I knew I had eight and eight. So I'm gonna show you both styles. And you can also just do plain clear. Now, I'm taking, this is a laminating pouch. I use a laminator. You can also use self laminating sheets. I have a laminator. I'm going to use it. And it's, you know, that's the inside is matte. The outside is shiny. What I'm going to do is cut enough. So I have eight just clear pieces. It'll all make sense to you when I start laminating, but this is all the prep work. So these don't need a clear back. These do need a clear back. So I come back over here. I find this honestly easier to do standing up because I wanna see what I'm doing first is cutting off. I guess I don't need to, I can go this, this way. I have my curly end here. I'm gonna want these three and a half. Oh, I do need to cut this end straight, sorry. So I'm just going to cut this end straight off, very little piece of waste right here. So you just want to make sure everything is lined up. And I'll show you exactly what I cut off here. I mean, it's just this little tiny bit, just so the top is straight. Now I'm going back this direction, still doubled. I'm taking it to my three and a half inch mark, right at the three and a half inch. You want to make sure it's lined up and square. Definitely, it is in your best interest to, um, you know, make sure you have everything lined up properly. I'm going to need four of these because I'm only using, or I am using um, one of each. So then you just come up here. Sorry if my head's getting in the way. I got to see here. And that's what's left. That's my little scrap piece. And then we'll just do one more. I'll have extra for another time. But I'm down here and I just want to make sure this is squared off on the end that's opened. So just so you know, this is the end. Should be the end that opens, yeah. Sometimes it sticks together a little bit. And you wanna be careful for me, like especially with the cat fur. You don't wanna go laminating cat fur in here, which been there, done that. And for me, I don't care, it's just my cats. But if I'm giving it to somebody, you know, I don't want cat fur. So three and a half inches wide and we know we want it um, six and a half inches long. I, I drew a blank there. So we know we want them six and a half inches on the long side. There we go. So that'll just be trash. You can use that to laminate something or not. Um, I do not double mine up. I just feel like I would prefer just to do this um, one at a time. Cut, you know, measure twice, cut once kind of thing. If you try to go too fast with this, you're going to mess up. These laminating pouches are pretty slippery to deal with. So there we go. This is it for the cutting portion of this game. So there, done. I have my eight single sheets. I'm not separating them yet. You just wanna keep them together as long as possible. Put that to the side. I'm gonna rotate here and I'm gonna bring in 
the laminator. So give me all a All right, second. we've got it all set up. Now I have a, the Pembroke, I got this at Aldi. This is my uh, laminator. I also got the laminating sheets at Aldi. I like to have something behind it that kind of raises it up so it feeds down into it, personal preference. Um, what you do is you open it up. So you have your two sheets and I'll show you it is attached. Open it up, I'm just laying it here. Now on the two sided ones, you just wanna make sure your opening is all going in the right direction. So if I had three on here, I will make sure my opening is at the top. That's where I, I know how to cut it. And then I just kind of cover that up and that's gonna hold it from shifting. To do a one-sided, so if I want this to open up, you always want the shiny. See the shine? That's the matte side. Not shiny, shiny. Um, texture to it, no texture, the slippery. You want that to show or to be down the two sticky sides basically together because they're gonna stick to each other. And then we have this paper and you can, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see, but I can see the outline of the clear. And I just wanna make sure that's laying as flat as it can be. Oh, I just moved it. And then when I sandwich them, I'll be able to see if they're not lined up before I feed them through. It doesn't matter if they're a little whoppy jawed in here, as long as you have enough room in between to cut. And then you really just want to slowly feed it until it grabs and it will take it through, um, through the feeder. I do mine twice. I send it through two times. I wanna very well make sure that these are stuck. So sending it through the heat twice does ensure that for me on these and they don't last forever. I mean, you know, you're in and out of these however frequently, but they're certainly cute. I watch some YouTubers that make new ones. I'm drinking my coffee, sorry, that make new ones every month. I have, this is the first batch of new ones I've made since January or late December. Cause it's not necessary, but they're cute. And this was just some scrapbook paper that I happened to have on hand. I could have cut the extra off just to save time going through here, but I just turn it over, feed it through. Now, if it starts to get going through here crooked, it will jam like nobody's business, just so you know. So and that has happened to me. And if it does, you just stop what you're doing, unjam it and start over. Anticipate you'll have some mess ups. It's just paper. And I think you get like 25 sheets in here or something for $5. I mean, definitely, definitely not expensive. 40 sheets. I got 40 sheets. I just looked at it for $5. You want to make sure you have plenty of room for it to slide when it comes out. And then you just wanna let it set up, let it cool, right? Before you start cutting. Now, if you had a better corner cutter than I do, I already did all of these. If you had a better corner cutter, you could cut them, but I don't. Here's what I'm saying with it being too close in here, it shifted a little bit. We're gonna see if that's too close. If it is, it's okay. So what I typically tend to do is I line up not with this edge because they're not in here straight. So I line up the top of the envelope. This is the top where the opening is gonna be. So I start there and I just cut my first opening, right? Then I come down here. This opening here, I need it to be a little bigger so i'm just going to cut this opening as well and then i'll go back and trim let's say so i left some of that paper but watch then i can come in and just trim if you wanted to put this let's say in a a5 or like a happy planner or something at the bottom just leave space and you can hole punch or on the side wherever you want it to go i'm not doing that for these because i don't know who's going to win the giveaway so it's just easier for me to just make them and, you know, then you can decide. But where I cut the top off is your opening. And now your money can go down in there. 
Now this has the back on it and you can write on these in um, Sharpie. Let's say I want this to be for gardening and I'm saving up for some gardening supplies and I write garden on here and I save my money and now I'm done and I won't need another gardening envelope. Nail polish remover and a cotton ball will take the Sharpie off and then you can rewrite on it. Because I'm not labeling them, again, I don't know who's gonna win these. So I'm not gonna label them, you know, for that. Now I'm going to cut the lid, the top off of the pig. Now see hey, how I'm sitting here editing and again, I don't know where my video went. I'm doing something weird with this camera. This is a newer phone for me. <sighs> Sorry, but I lost some footage again, but I wanted to show you. So I did all the, the process, the laminating and everything, but I wanted to show you the finished product. So basically, here's a nice close up. When you're cutting, you're cutting across the top, you wanna to pick up just the smallest amount of this paper and that will give you your opening. You wanna leave about an eighth of an inch of the laminating material around the edges so you don't peel it open when you're getting in and out of these envelopes. And I'm not sure if I did a great job in the video showing you, but it's really easy. Now, the one-sided ones, let me grab one. I just made them for me because I, did, I had extra and I was doing it. The one-sided, where I only have the paper on the one side, I used the double layer of lamination on the back. And if you put the two matte sides together, they stick. The shiny side doesn't. So now I can get in here. I can put notes on the back or I could put a register in here. So this is the back side of paper. This is just clear. If you wanted to make just a clear envelope, you would do um, two on the inside, two on the outside. So four layers of clear, which would make it nice and heavy for you. On these, I just folded the paper like I showed you, laminated, and then the cutting, it's just cutting around. And make sure you give yourself enough of the, you know, the side here so that when you open it up, it doesn't um, peel it on the edges. If you have a, one of those crocodile, chonkadile, chompadiles, I think that if we are memory keepers, it's their big old chomper things, that would be good to round these corners. So I am not rounding them. If you see the square here on this, because I don't have one of those and I don't have something strong enough to cut through multiple layers of paper and laminating materials. So I just wanted to make sure, I know the video cut off abruptly. I went to load the last video and it said, Alexa, play Queen Radio by Pandora. I mean, I was listening to music, but that wasn't the video I wanted. And there's no other video on my phone. So I either ran out of memory, hit eh, eh, wine, wine. I don't know what happened, but <laughs> here they are. They're complete. I know there's a lot more um, DIYs out there. If that this doesn't work for you, feel free to ask me any questions, but they're really easy. It's just two pieces of paper laminated and you cut the top off. And like I was saying in the video, if you wanted to like put this in a binder, you could leave an inch at the bottom or an inch and a half. Don't, you know, cut it. And you could then hole punch it to go into a binder. And then these will go in, you would just leave these to flip through. You could also do it on the side if you had a small binder. I wouldn't hang them upside down. They do a really good job of holding cash, but I'm not telling you it's not gonna fall out. So, so there's that. These are done. I just wanted to stop in and tell you that. Um, I don't know what happened. I gotta be more careful apparently with my video recording, but I hope you enjoyed this little bit and I will talk with you later. Bye.